Make sure you take a disco nap so you can stay up late with us and the devil. This is a cool little horror movie called Late Night with the Devil. I'm so happy that we're talking about this because when I saw it, I'm like, Alonzo's going to dig it. So much of this is so you. So I'm really <laughs> glad we're talking about it. You got to subscribe to us here at Breakfast All Day because when some really fun, cool, little buzzed about movie comes out, we will always be on it. And that is definitely what this is. Alonzo, please tell us about this film. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay tuned for a live television first as we attempt to commune with the devil. So it's Halloween 1977, and uh, talk show host Jack Delroy, who was always, always running second to Johnny Carson in the ratings, uh, tries for one big gambit, which is to have a parapsychologist and her young patient, who is allegedly possessed by a demon, come on the show and maybe manifest that demon on late night live television. The film is structured as though we are getting to see the tapes of this infamous episode, as well as the behind the scenes stuff. And, uh, you know, the period, the tale is spot on the, mm -hmm. the men's suits by botany 500 and, you know, <laughs> uh, the, all the, the color scheme, everything. I love the idea here. Like the premise is a, is a brilliant one and they see it through, I think pretty well. Um, and even though I don't, I think they, they fall a little short in the last act. Um, you know, I, I admire the I admire the moxie here. I admire the chutzpah of, of of framing an entire horror movie within the confines of a talk show and its backstage. Um, but like, I did find myself asking questions of like, why are there cameras backstage? You know, and d d different sort of detail things that nagged at me because I've seen this kind of premise done really well. Like one of my favorite TV movies of all time is a film called um, Special Bulletin. It was one of the first mm. things that Zwick and Herskovitz ever did. And you're basically seeing a terrorist incident entirely in the way that network news would cover it. And they figure out ways to take you to different places in a way that makes sense. Like the terrorists take a cameraman and a newsman hostage. So we get to hear from them because, you know, they would be on the news show. This one, I think, doesn't always live up to its uh, in-world premise. But that said, I think it's executed really well. There's some genuine scares and um, a terrific lead performance from David Desmalchian, who, you know, from Suicide Squad and Oppenheimer and a million other things. Uh, I, I, I like this movie a lot. I, I admire it more than I love it, but I think they get a lot right and it's absolutely mm -hmm. worth seeing. I thought it was just so cool and so inventive and it takes pieces of things that we know and makes them something totally new. It felt to me kind of like the Blair Witch Project meets mm. Network, <laughs> sure. you know, in that it's like this found footage film. And we saw so many found footage movies come along after Blair Witch, right? Yes. Because that was such a, a phenomenon. People fleeing the theater, throwing up, screaming in terror. You know, everyone wanted <laughs> a piece of that. you could do it cheaply. <laughs> you could do it cheaply. It could look like crap and that is a feature and not a bug. That's exactly. like an artistic choice. <laughs> um, so we got so many of those for so long and this feels like a really well thought out, really cool structure of, to get into that. But also all that period detail as you say is is so authentic the hair like the little bumps like the little graphics they do yes, as the bump the, coming the in and right out back. of break like yeah. when and and the use of it at one crucial moment of everything going wrong and then they're like technical difficulties like, we'll be <laughs> yes. right back do, 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 do. <laughs> um i don't think you ever knew where this was going and the, a lot of that has to do with the use of silence the use of pacing just the expert ratcheting up of the tension yeah. and just the sense that like oh this is happening in front of all of these people and we are now among them we you feel like you are part of the audience for this thing that you know goes horribly wrong from the outset but you don't know how that's going to happen. Um, I thought the young woman who plays the the teenage girl in it, she's Ingrid yes. Torelli, plays Lily, and she's great. And they achieve, the brothers, the two brothers, Cameron and Colin Cairns, they are Australian filmmaking brothers. They achieve a lot in a very confined space with what must have been a low budget. And that extends to the makeup detail, the special effects mm. makeup on her and how they make her do certain things. And it all looked pretty seamless to me for what I'm assuming was not a whole lot of money. Yeah, even as it gets into some creature effects later in the film, which is all I'll say, uh, that is, is, is captured really well. I admire the fact also that the movie looks like 
videotape. Like it captures that 70s shot on tape aesthetic, which I think is even harder to try and do digital effects in that than it is, mm. you know, in, in film, just because of the way that things are lit. And it's in that kind of the, the, the way that that definition works with your eyes and what you're seeing and how it has a flat realness to it. So if you're then going to introduce something on top of that, uh, it's hard to pull off, but they do that really well. But I, part of me kept thinking, like, would this have been better as like an hour long Black Mirror episode, you know, and oh. I was like, maybe, you know, I think it, it does. It does spring some twists that absolutely work that I didn't see coming. But at, by the end, maybe there's like one too many. Uh, it's short but, though it's only like an hour and a half long it's yeah, no yeah, yeah. mistake no, no, no. to welcome too much absolutely no, no no don't get me wrong and and i think what it does right absolutely outweighs the minor quibbles i have with with some of the the ideas here so absolutely people should see it weirdly enough i wonder if this is a movie that's going to be better on tv hmm. than in a theater because they really capture the tv look so well that i think watching it on tv i don't i didn't notice what the aspect ratio is it like, changes Okay. Well, yeah, that's true because the backstage stuff. So, uh, like, uh, yeah, it, it might. I mean, I, I, as much as I always try and encourage the theatrical experience, this might look better on Shutter because it is capturing what TV shows look like. Yeah, for sure. I think so much of what makes this work is the casting of David Desmalchin in the lead mm -hmm. because I think we know him from something. We all know him from something else as a longtime supporting player, like a sure. featured player. He's one of those that guys. He's incredibly versatile, you know, whether it's in the Ant Man movies or the Suicide Squad or just so much that he's in the first Dune. He's in Dune Part One. Oh, right, he's somebody yeah. who can disappear into a lot of different kinds of roles. But there's something really intense about his eyes that mm. can be either warm and kind of sweet and kind of sad or really intense and unsettling and he uses both of those qualities very effectively here because he has to be this you know likable very affable talk show host um and also have great comic timing but then you also see backstage you know the the cunning going on with this character and, and, and how calculated some of these really dangerous choices are that he's making and so he has to be able to balance both of those people and make them seamless and believable and he does it's also just so nice to see him in a leading role absolutely yeah no no i'm glad that he gets to be number one on the call sheet here and i think he's really mm -hmm. making the most out of it because you're right this does kind of he does have to kind of play both sides of like the public and the private persona here and and he really gets that part well i want to give a quick shout out to reese Otter, who plays the ed mcmahon you know uh, uh hank kingsley mm -hmm. of this movie who is so brilliantly put upon um it's you know he is he is as always sort of that that sidekick guy is always sort of the whipping boy and things like this and he he bears his uh you know his burden very well yeah well, i'm so glad that you watched this i watched it over the weekend i'm like ooh, alonzo's gonna like this so i'm so <laughs> glad you got to see it too um it is opening theatrically this weekend march 22nd but then it will be on shutter eventually and we'll keep you posted as to when that is going to be alonzo what's your number let me say like a 7.9. I, I think it's really strong and, and it's so good that it just, it, it like it nags at me that it doesn't completely nail all of it, but it nails so much of it. it it's definitely worth a look. I will say 8.8. .8. It's great. Um, so go check it out. Late Night with the Devil.